Kal halalium la yahawo bahasham shal yahawo shai baha rakakodash, which is ancient Paleo Hebrew for all praises to Yahweh, the Heavenly Father's only Hebrew name, um, who the world ignorantly calls Jah Jehovah, etc., in the name of Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Yeshua, etc., in the Holy Spirit, which is a rakakodash. I want to give double honors to the apostles and elders of Great New Stone who diligently teach the word and feed the sheep of Mosai and his son Yahushai, um, who are the so-called Negroes, Latinos, Amerindians, Native Americans, Hispanics, and confusion faces in scattered in this world throughout the world today. All right, I want to do a quick lesson on the blasphemy of Esau. Right, this is well, this will be part one. You know, spirit, spirit is leading me to find um, content as this by Esau would blaspheme Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai, and this will prove that Esau is a so called white race and nobody else. Right, so um, this is a actor, I didn't know he was a comedian as well, Russell Brand. I believe he was in a relationship, he was married to according to scriptures to um, Katy Perry, right. You know, the drug addict and whatnot. So, I'm gonna. And the name of this uh, stand up comedy is uh, Messiah Complex. It came out in 2013, and he said some really blasphemous and filthy things, as you would expect as um, from Esau, right? He says, um, There's no, more, no profane person as Esau, all right? So, I'm gonna play this clip, and then I'm gonna go into the scriptures. She's pretty halbash and Yoshe. I want to say to Wadi Abash and Moshe, for the spirit of making this lesson. And uh, I can get about two or three videos out of this because he just goes on and on about, about, um, about you know, blasphemy, blasphemy, and Yahweh Bash and Moshe. So let's get into it. If you have a story, you're going to need heroes. Here are the heroes that I have selected. Tonight, I want to explain to you why I love these heroes so much, why they are so important, and I also want to subtly imply to you that I am a little bit like them. So watch out for that, that's going to be fun for you. First hero, Gandhi. Now Gandhi I admire very much because he's the pioneer of non-violent protest, an ingenious form of public insurrection that makes it very hard for oppressors to control you or arrest you. I can't seem to arrest Gandhi, he's gone all limp. Brilliant. Inspired. I also admire Gandhi because he successfully united the Hindu and Muslim populations against the imperial invading force that were colonially exploiting India. It doesn't matter who that country was. That is an irrelevant detail. Let's just assume they were trying their hardest. My second hero, Che Guevara. I love Che Guevara because he gave up the life of an Argentinian aristocrat to live the life of a guerrilla warrior in the Cuban jungles fighting for the people. My next hero, Malcolm X. I admire Malcolm X because he is a great orator who told a new story to a subjugated class of people and elevated their consciousness and changed their destiny. And Jesus I like because I think I look a bit like him. <laughs> All four of these men, of course, have one thing in common. They are all martyrs. All right, so the main thing is that he said that he looked a little bit like like Jesus, all right? Which is which is not um, biblically accurate, all right? So I'm going to go through a lesson to teach those, the watchers, and whoever, whoever, whoever you have, I shall lead to this video to show them that this is blasphemy, all right? This is blasphemy. This is going against. This is going against the truth. All right. This is going against the truth. The truth. The truth of what the Bible says about about um, about the description of Yahweh Shai, who the word is going to call Jesus. All right. And um, all right. I'm going to read from this dictionary definition of um. Of, of um blasphemy is a, a Collins co built and it was published since let's see, 
1988. So that's a, that's a nice, good old, old dictionary slot here. The older dictionary, the better because, you know, they're changing meanings and definition of the words. All right. So blasphemy, it says, if someone says or does something that shows disrespect for the most high, you can say that what they are saying is, what they're saying or doing is blasphemy. All right. Oh, and here's an example how they put it too. It says, and any attempt to violate that image is blasphemy. So they're violating the, the, the physical description, the image of Yahweh Shai. Right? Who the word it can recall Jesus. I'm going to keep saying that. All right. So the first scripture I'm going to read is um, Hebrews chapter 7 and verse 14. And it says, for it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah, of which the tribe Moses speak nothing concerning priesthood. Now, um, I read this. I read this so that we can go to this scripture. It says he kind he came out to the tribe of Judah. You know, people like calling the conquering line the tribe of Judah. You know, that's a nice uh, thing to say. People, you know, especially the Rastafarians. This is uh, Jeremiah chapter fourteen, and verse two. Judah mourneth, and the gates thereof language they are black unto the ground, and cry, and the cry. Of Jerusalem has gone up they are black onto the ground slack here and now now we don't refer to ourselves as black people or stuff like that but this is a description of how how they um how the tribe of Judah was was um was being afflicted all right because remember we build the pyramids and so forth so we're different shades of brown right so-called Negroes Latinos Native Americans, you know, are the children of Israel, right? Anyone that's so-called white is um is it not anyone slack yet? The the Edomite bloodline is of the so-called white race, all right? There are Israelites who look like so-called white people, but according to scriptures, they're not white. They're red because they have translucent skin. The upper layer of the skin is just transparent. That's why they look so red when when they um get angry or in the sun too long all right and let me just check this word black in the hebrew and that's strong's six nine turn seven and it's quad dark to mourn to be dark dark and cause to mourn to grow all right it says to be ashy that is dark colored so they were black they were dark in complexion all right it's technically no one's black no one's this color here or this bar no one's that like like this crowd here black as that right no one is white like this page <laughs> um let's see here let's go to our next scripture that further describes oh snap think it again all right new testament revelation Chapter 1, verse 1. And it says, The revelation of Jesus Christ, but his name is Yahweh Shai, and this is Mashiach, which the Most High gave unto him to shew unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent, sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John. So this is what John saw the revelation, the word revelation is the word apocalypse which means to reveal All right apoc up ap al up sis apocalypse right it says laying bare naked disclosure of the truth instruction all right concerning things before unknown manifest manifestation appears or in other words to appear um, to reveal see be revealed in the strong definition all right and this is what Yahweh Shai revealed to John let's go scroll on to verse uh, 12 and it says and I turned to see the voice that speak with 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 me because if you read above here he says um Yahweh Shai says I am the Alpha and Omega the first and the last and what and what thou seest write in the book this is what he wrote that speak with me and begin and being turned i saw seven golden candlesticks and in the midst of the seven candlesticks one like the son of man 
clothed with a garment down to the foot and girt about the pops that mean he was wearing a belt around the abdomen area with a golden girdle and that's a belt golden belt right a battle a war belt so to speak um, his head and his hairs were white like wool all right white like wool and which race has woolly hair so called negroes the latinos had it as well before they were raped raped and, and, and murdered and, and um, massacred by um, so-called Edomites um, as white as snow and his eyes were as a flame of fire all right now let's go into the uh, part with the hair real quick we're gonna go to uh, flock here let it Just a Daniel. Daniel 10 on verse 5. This is going to parallel Revelation a bit. You know, as the scripture says, you got to read precept upon precept, line upon line. It says, Then I lifted up mine eyes and looked, and behold, a certain man clothed with clothed in linen whose loins were guarded with fine gold of euphaz slakia his body also was like beryl that means the color of the garment was was beryl and his face has appearance of lightning because he was in the presence presence of the, of his father um and his eyes were as as lamps of fire his arms and his feet like the color of polished brass and the color of polished brass is brown a dark brown and a voice and the voice of his words is like the multitude right now let's go to Daniel 7 and 9 to deal with the here factor then we go back to Revelation and it says I beheld till the thrones were cast down and the ancient of days did sit whose garment was was white as snow and the ancient of days is the most high the heavenly father because we're ancient means before all right so he was before time all right his garment was white as snow meaning he has a body and his hair off his head like pure wool right so mean that he has his father's hair so mean that his father is even a so-called black man right so-called negro Alright, um, let's go back to Revelation. I'm going to read back 12. Yeah, and it says, And I turn and I see the voice that spake unto me, and being turned, I saw the seven. I saw seven golden candlesticks, and in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girt about the paps with a golden girdle, and his head and his hairs were white like wool, so he had woody hair, and it was white, because he was in the presence of Yahweh Hashem just as Moses' face shone when he was in the when he was ministering unto Yahweh Hashem as white as snow. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. His feet and his his feet like unto fine brass, as if they were burned in a furnace. So if you burn brass in a furnace, it will be a dark, dark brown. And 